Hello family and welcome to our LWC3 Midweek Life in the Word Bible Study. On behalf of our church family, thank you for joining us this evening and we pray that you will be blessed, inspired, and empowered through the teaching of God's Word. Well, good evening once again, uh, family. Uh, welcome to our LWC3 Midweek Life in the Word Bible Study. I'm Pastor John Butler and thank you so much for taking time out of your Wednesday evening uh, to share this time with us as we prepare to receive more and more of what God has in store for us. I know that I've given you uh, two previous foundational nuggets. Today I'm going to give you number three. We're going to tarry here for a little bit. Got a lot of scripture to cover. So let's prepare our hearts and our minds to receive what we believe God has in store for us. It is my prayer that this teaching finds you in the perfect will of God and that all of you are, are growing, you're strengthened, you're encouraged even more in God as we continue to grow in Him and position ourselves so that God can speak back to us through the effective teaching of his word. I just thank you so much for joining us every single week. And it is my prayer that your notebooks are filling up, your tablets are filling up, your word life is growing, you're studying, you're encouraged even more uh, as we're laying the foundation from these foundational nuggets uh, that you're able to glean and get something from here that I believe is going to continue to perpetuate upward mobility and growth in the things of God in your individual lives as well as your your collective lives. And not only that, I pray that you are sharing this word with somebody. If we've experienced the freedom, the liberty that the word of God is designed to produce in our life, I pray that you're sharing that with other people so that they can experience the same liberty. I'm loving this teaching session. I'm loving uh, this aspect of uh, Mark chapter 8, verse 34, where Jesus has given us the third of um, what, we'll be, what, we, what we've been teaching and sharing from God's authentic, God's formula for authentic discipleship. I'm excited about number three and following him. So let's pray. And uh, you know what? This time we are going to make our Bible confession. I know y'all been calling me out uh, and then get right into the word. Father, we thank you now for this time of sharing and teaching your word. Father, we give you praise, Lord, and honor for another time of coming together, Lord God, collectively for your people, Lord God, and us just, Lord God, spending time with you, Lord God, during the, on this evening, Lord God, just growing and understanding what your word has to speak and say to us, Lord God, about following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and understanding the more your formula for authentic or trustworthy discipleship. Father, we just give you praise, glory and honor, Lord God, that your word is continuing to come forth with clarity, is continuing to come forth with understanding, Lord God, that irreparable damage is being done, Father God, to our ignorance, Lord God, as we just lift you up and glorify you, Lord God, for just bringing us safely through, Lord God, another week on this uh, this far, Lord God, in another week. And Lord God, just uh, growing us every single day and just meeting us in our meeting time with you, Lord God, whether it's through prayer or reading your word, Father, that you will be glorified in everything that we do as we desire, Lord God, to exist and live, Lord God, in your formula for authentic discipleship. Help us to find ourselves, Lord God, in the teaching of your word, Father, that you will be glorified in everything that we do. And Father, we just honor you. We thank you, Lord God, for just being the great God that you are, Lord God, and meeting us where we are. And I'm so grateful, Lord God, for the people who are tuned in, Lord God, they sacrifice every single week to be here with us as we labor, Lord God, in the word, Father, to just share, Father, what you have given to us to share, Father, that you would be glorified. And Father, tonight is no different. Father, we just ask you to lead us and guide us as we transition through your word, Father, that you would be glorified for us in the matchless, mighty, and awesome name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, let's make our Bible confession. Y'all got to forgive me. I'd be, so, I'd be so inundated and ready to get into this word. The confession is important. Uh, and I, I would do everything in my power to just make sure we're continuing to make that confession. I know that some of you be making it, uh, although I don't sometimes remember in this setting uh, to do it collectively. But from week to week, I'd be, you know, dialed in and know we're going to be teaching. I'd be so ready to get into it. But let's make our confession. It simply says what the contents of this book when received in my heart and applied daily in my life will change the contents of my character to conform me to the image of God. Christ. We did it. So we thank God for this opportunity to come into the teaching of his word. And I just pray that this word has continuously been a blessing to you. Um, even through the pre to two 
previous points that we have made. Uh, I'm not going to get into them uh, in this particular session uh, in any any length or detail, but go back and look at, at uh, foundation nugget number one uh, that we laid with you. Now, foundation nugget number two, it took us two iterations of our our teaching session to get through that, talking about that will, but that thing, that's that's important. Now, I hope you were able to, to get some revelation from that. Not only that, but uh, since we've taught that word, I hope that the hope that the Holy Spirit was able to illuminate some things in your life. That's why we have to get up on purpose every day. That's why we have to ensure that, um, you know, we have this mindset that we're going to make the investment into that daily because uh, I reached a point in time in my life where, you know what, I had been doing things according to my will and my way and what I wanted to do long enough. And I can share this with you, man, the moment I decided to, you know, just begin that trek, begin that process of allowing God's will to maximize uh, influence in my life. Oh my God. Oh, what a change. Uh, what a change. I began to look at things completely different. And not only that, one of the byproducts of that, I can tell you is that I had never heard him so clear. I had never heard him so clear. Um, I had never, you know, felt the closeness that I felt um, until after I began to relinquish John Butler. And I began to, you know, look at things through through his lens, through the impact of his influence and through uh, his leading and guiding us. And let me share something with you. It is never too late to start. It's never too late to get on the right track to doing that. Let me just appeal to you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care about the mistakes that you made in your life. All He knows all about those things. And for the simple fact that guess what, brothers and sisters, we still have his breath in our body that we are breathing, which gives us the opportunity to get it right. You know, I know I teach a lot dealing with the word of God and a lot of what we share has to do with, um, you know, the individual and us taking an inward look and us making the investment. That's all I want you to do is to make the investment at giving God an opportunity. I did it. And there's teaching sessions like this that I hope to communicate that not from a judgmental perspective, um, because there's nothing uh, that I like experiencing greater than seeing people who may have fallen out of relationship, get back in relationship. And not only that, not just get back in relationship, but get back on the front line and make a difference and don't hide behind your mistakes. Don't hide behind your transgressions. Don't hide behind the not so good decisions, but, but own them. Own them because the enemy wants us to, to hide behind those things. No, you know what? My greatest joy is when I can coach, teach, and mentor and share my personal failures with people who may have or may be experiencing the same thing. That's why I love our men's ministry because, man, some things be coming out there. Um, but that's, that's, that's what I want to do. And I want you to feel the freedom. Now, am I... Uh, Glad about certain things? No, shameful to the heart. Trust me, shameful to the heart. But it's through teachings like this that help me to expand on that knowledge and help me to grow in those particular areas. So let's get into let's get into point number three. Are you ready? Point number three of our foundational nuggets. Here's the three, and I actually have a total of five of them. Let me just go ahead and give you this. So this this is number three, and over the next two weeks or next two iterations of our midweek life in the birth in the word Bible study, we'll get to number five and then begin to map out where I want to move um, from a foundational perspective. But I hope that it's it's been a blessing to you. And and we don't I don't I don't teach. Um, you know, to get through something. If you're looking for a hit it and quit it, that's not me. Uh, I want to make sure that we take a methodical approach to affording God every opportunity through the scriptures and the things that he has given me to share with you. I want to make sure that we are, we are providing the greatest opportunity to hear things over and over and over and over again so that it becomes a part of your life. Um, and that's why I challenge you to go back and read, go back and study, get into the meat of the word, but statistically, most people don't, uh, just to be honest with you. Um, but I'm not going to give up. I have faith. I have confidence to believe that every single week you're going back, 
you're reading, you're studying, that your prayer life and your word life is at a level that creates a great platform and foundation for us to be able to share uh, the word of God. That's why over the course of our teaching, there are certain scriptures that I've used over and over and over again. Like I always reference our base scripture. As I said previously, by now, you should have memorized that particular scripture because that's our base. That's where uh, that's the springboard that we use to get us to where we are right now. But you got to tell yourself we have to make the investment. Not only that, but I pray that you're seeing the change take place in your life. Now, sometimes the change that is taking place in your life, sometimes the enemy don't want to relinquish some of the strongholds and footholds that they have, have in our life, but defeat him. Kick his rusty, dusty out of your life. Make sure that he has no active presence in your life, which means that he can present some things, but you don't have to submit to him. He can present some things, but I don't have to submit to him because I know who I serve. And I know that there's nothing greater. There's no greater maximum influence on the kingdom than when. And I decide with every fiber of my being in my heart, my mind, my soul, and my spirit to follow my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, wherever he may lead you and I. And I can assure you what we're trying to show you here is in the framework of what Jesus came to bring to us, the example that he left on record for us. But we've got to tap into the word of God to understand with this entirety what he's actually said to us as we continue to unfold this and share this with you as it relates to following our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, and the joy that comes behind it when we accomplish certain things in him and we can just give him all the praise, all the glory and all of the honor. So number three, are you ready? Number two, let me just read that to you once again. Number two, if we stay the journey, our will will be slowly lost in God's will. Now I want to continue down that, that same vein, but show you the encouraging part of that and the part that gives us, um, gives us something to hold on to as we move forward in the process. Here's number three. When our will is lost, caveat from number two, when our will is lost in God's, when our will is lost in God's will or lost in God's, our journey and discipleship process aspirations will be strengthened. Uh Oh, this is the reward part of losing our will in God. When our will is lost in God's will, our journey and discipleship process aspirations will be strengthened. They gain the teeth. They gain the muscle. Watch this in the sustainability process as we follow him. Because the more and more we, as we said previously, understand and embrace his will. The more and more we will see the byproducts of that process, which I'm sharing with you. One is strength. We grow in strength because as we make the exchange and more and more of his will is prevalent. There are times that the following process, as I said previously, we may want to give up. We may feel battered. We may feel beaten along the journey, but understand that we're operating in his strength and in his strength, we don't have to give up. We don't even have to entertain it. We don't have to quit. We don't have to allow anything other than a successful end result that he has for us the opportunity to manifest. That's what we are after. So it means this, all of your investment, all of our investment, it's not for naught. Trust me, we have a father that sees it all. We have a father that has an intimate working relationship with our processes that we are in, especially watch this, especially when we have the desire, when we have the drive, when we have the motivation to make it all about him and less about us. When we do that and we know that it is his strength that is a byproduct of the discipleship process aspirations, the strength that comes to undergird us is designed to 
carry us. What are you saying, Pastor? Let me share something with you. As I said from the very first part of this teaching, those of us who have been in this for about an hour and a half now, or been walking for more than a day, you can relate to to some of the some of the the pitfalls and things that relates to the discipleship process and following Him. One of the things that I've 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 encountered more so than anything that I've had to encourage more people is to not quit, to stay the course, to stay the journey, to eliminate the feeling of antsy, because if you when you see people like that, they're 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 on a timeline, they're on a periodic clock that they do things for a period of time and at the point in time where the investment of God into their life is about to manifest in them based on their cycle, they're gone. They'll run. They'll change positions. Or they, they will allow more times than not the same thing that got them before to get them again. But, but this time... It may come in a different form. This time it may come under different pretenses, but it's the same spirit. It's the same quitting, giving up, running. I'm out of here. Deuces. It's the same mentality. And watch this. God never gets to a point of complete maturity and growth in their life. And everything that I'm sharing with you and I is designed to encourage us, as I said before, to stay the course, to stick with it, to not give up. And here's the thing. If you leave one setting and go plant yourself another in another or in another situation, guess what? Nothing is going to change because the issue is not where you're at. The issue is with you. And so the encouragement is, is for us to understand that, that in those moments where we may feel weakened in the process, in the, in our process, you know, in the discipleship process that we understand that, you know, there are elements and deposits that God has made into our life that we don't have to give into that. So number three, once again, is when our will is lost. And, and, and we use the word slowly the last time to express this. But when our will is lost, when you and I have a level of commitment that, give God, that gives God complete and total access in this process, that's what it's all about. It's you and I giving him full reign taking the brakes off, taking the gloves off, not putting him in a box or limiting him. When you and I understand that, when we deal with that in its entirety, when our will is lost in God's will, our journey and discipleship process aspirations will be strengthened. Why? Because you're no longer going in your own might. You're no longer going in your own power. You're no longer going and watch this. You're on strength. We are moving forward in his. And the thing is, is that God knows the challenges. He knows the roadblocks. He knows the things that are, are coming to try to deter us and get us off course, off key. Just some of the things that you've gone through this week. Some of the conversations that you've entertained. What? All of those things are designed to pull you back into a position where more of your will is in charge than God's will. So you got to really hone in on that word lost. When something is lost, lose it to not find it again. Lose it so that it has no more place in your life. Lose it so that it doesn't have any more credence or credibility in your life. That everything about you in the new in God, in this will process and his will, having more of a dominance in your life, that it means so much to you that, that when you get to that particular point, you're not trying to relinquish that. You're trying to protect that like a, like a, a, a good treasure. And not only that, but other people around you will see it. So when they bring that stuff up to you that you know you should not be listed or be a part of, you got to check that. You can't allow those things to infiltrate the process because it's looking for the kinks and the cracks in your armor as an entry point to what once was. No, 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 no. The will of God says, no, that's not a part of God's will for my life. That's what we have to do. That's no longer part of God's will for my life. 
At one time you had a presence in my life, but the presence was to um, weaken me. The presence was, you know, to cause me to turn back. The presence was to cause me to give up on the things of God, but you don't live there anymore. And you got to remind yourself of that. So once again, when our will is lost in God's will, our journey in discipleship process aspirations will be strengthened, meaning this. Here's the first thing that it means. Watch this. Here's the first thing that point number three means. We have an internal and external spiritual awakening that we receive addition by subtraction. Well, oh, pastor, you got to read that one again. Don't worry about it. I will. Watch this. This is what it means. Number one, we have an internal and external spiritual awakening that we receive addition by subtraction, by adding more of God's will to the process and subtracting more of ours, the spiritual and internal awakening alerts us to these particular facts and begins to lead us down a path that reflects where we're actually going in the process. And see, sometimes we don't want to relinquish some of these things as it relates to our will because we don't see the addition by subtracting these things from our life. But for me to move from a position to where I'm no longer dominated by lust, I'm no longer dominated by anger, I'm no longer dominated by hurt, I'm no longer, no longer dominated by uh, feelings of bitterness and abandonment. I'm no longer dominated by the insecurities that I face in life. I'm no longer dominated by these things that are contrary to God's active presence in my life. When those things are subtracted, the addition is, is you have an ever presence. Or let me say this. You have a, ever, a knowledge of the ever presence in God's life. That's a viable substitute. So I move from those things to what those things from those from what those things meant in the natural and those things that were to my detriment to move into these things in a spiritual and counteracting it with God's active influ influence and presence in my life. Then we begin to see the change. Then we begin to see clearly how our will can be lost in God's will and how our journey and our process aspirations are strengthened even the more because watch this. The realization is, is that my dependency is no longer in the pity party. My dependency is no longer in the uh, haphazards and missteps. My, my dependency is no longer there. The encouragement of what I'm looking for, for no longer lives there. It's in the will of God when he tells me that I am the opposite of all those things I was trying to hold on to. When he tells me that not only am I subtracting and removing these things from your life, I am going to replace it with things that was bigger, better, stronger that can sustain us. And in the sustaining process, that's when we experience his strength. That's when we receive his encouragement. That's when we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm moving forward in the discipleship process by following my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I am better than ever before. Because of these things present in our life. Let's look at, let's get some word on it. Look at Philippians chapter three, Philippians chapter three, Philippians chapter three. And with the time I have left, um, I want to want to complete this. Look at Philippians chapter number three. Remember, number one, we have an internal and external spiritual awakening that we receive addition by subtraction because sometimes we will want to focus on what we have to give up. Now, in some sense, I can say that that's a natural expression when you've been living there your whole life, when you have been, you've embraced these things, but nothing viable and appealing, especially as it relates to the things of God in my old Bible. None of those things have been presented to you. Well, we're trying to present that to you now, the alternative to where you are and what you have been dealing with. That's what we're trying to show you. Are you in Philippians chapter three? Listen to what Paul was saying here. Um, Philippians chapter three, look at verse number seven. I'm going to get down to uh, verse number 11. He says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Look at these things. Verse eight. Yes, everything else is worthless 
when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. Now, from a historical perspective, he's, he's, he's equating this to his natural evolution of gaining knowledge and understanding just because of who he was and who he was schooled by. One of the, one of the great theologians, you know, uh, during this particular time, uh, Dr. Gamaliel, um, he's Paul saying, I'm, I'm counting all of that loss. In other words, these things that I was holding on to that I looked at as a, an addition, but I'm subtracting these things for my life. Only thing he's doing is putting this into the proper perspective, especially in comparison to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why these words are so powerful. They, they are so meaningful. And we have to be able to understand this, this mentality because my, my question to myself when I first came into uh, the knowledge of this is, is what am I holding, to, holding on to or what am I giving more value and credence to than my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Is it the piece of paper? Is it the names on the wall? Is it all of my natural accomplishments? Those things have their proper place, but not in comparison to the things of God. Not that I would ever frame my heart and my mind to put those things that I have attained before my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because in the proper context, some of those things will cause people to chase after those things. Then they will the things of God. Uh Oh, Oh, can I say this? And you guys not be mad. That's, and you've heard me say this before, chasing after the things of academia. Yes, yeah, easy for us to invest more, invest more time in that than to, than to the things of God. And we wonder why when those things no longer, no longer have value and importance, we're, we're left with nothing. We are absolutely left with with nothing. We have an internal and external spiritual awakening that we receive addition by subtracting. Look at verse number nine and become one with him. I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law. Ah, listen to how he's putting this in into perspective because this is all he knew. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ for God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. It depends on faith. Verse 10, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. That's sacrifice. That's an exchange process right there. Verse 10. I mean, verse 11. So that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Look at his life. Remember, I told you there is a spiritual awakening that we receive addition by subtracting. In other words, what are you saying, Pastor? Remove these things from your life that present you that prevent you from being lost in God's will, that prevent your will from being lost in God's will and prevent us from embracing the strength that uh, that we are afforded through that process. Here's the second thing that it means. Here's the second thing that we have an internal and external spiritual awakening that we receive addition by subtraction. Here's the second thing that it means. It means that our value in God is realized at a level that transcends external distractions and desires. Uh-oh, that's good. Our value in God is realized. Some people don't know their value. They don't know their worth to God in the kingdom. Our value in God is realized at a level that transcends external distractions and desires. What are you talking about? This internal, external, spiritual awakening that we receive addition by subtraction, it means that our value in God is realized at a level that transcends external distractions and desires. We no longer are governed by the external distractions and desires because we've come to a realization of the value that we have in God. Some people are controlled by other people because they think other people control their value and their worth. But when we change the dynamics of the and our mindset from what we're being taught and what is being shared with us is from the value and the investment that God makes into us in the word of God, in us getting into the word of God to understand our value and our worth. And that's why I encourage people, watch this. I encourage people like I had to encourage myself. Don't 
allow yourself to continue to fall victim to the shortcomings and the mistakes in your life. Because at one time I did that. All thing, only thing I was doing was seeing the failures and the, what I was not doing and doings and happenings and all of those things. I was focused on those things and so focused on those things that I was missing the bigger picture. How God could take the focus from those things, put the focus on him and use those things that I was focused on to help me realize my value, realize my worth that I no longer have to be subject to those things anymore in my life which better positioned me so that I don't have to fall victim to those things. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Listen to what he's saying. This is what Paul is saying again. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. I just gave you uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. I hope you're, you're seeing this. Our value in God is realized at a level that transcends external distractions and desires. In other words, they don't have a presence. They do not have a place in your life. They no longer have authority. Man, and I will share this with you even more. You go back to the second point of our foundational nugget. Man, good Lord, today, that is a part of losing ourselves in his will. Because a lot of things that I did, watch this. Let me share this, share this with you. A lot of things that I did was outside of his will, not in his will. And until I got to know his will, I did not realize how important it was for me to know that what I did outside of his will and the potential that those things had to destroy me. It wasn't until I got into the will of God that I was, that I was empowered to exercise authority over those things. And my value went to another level. Are you there in second Timothy chapter four? Are you there yet? I can't hear y'all. Okay, you're there now. Okay, thank you. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. This is what Paul was saying. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. He knew this. And he allowed, or he did not allow, the external distractions and desires to cause him to minimize his worth and his value in God in accomplishing God's will, following, following quite following Christ and understanding the fulfillment of purpose and destiny, following Christ. Verse seven, I have fought a good fight. I finished the race and I have remained faithful. I have remained faithful. And now watch this verse eight. Here's the icing on the cake. And now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. You get to that point when you realize your value at a level that transcends external distractions and desires. At one point in time, there were distractions and external desires that was in his life. But when Paul began to refocus, when he began to allow the will of God, his will to be lost in God's will for him, he was able to accomplish a number of things for the kingdom so that God would be glorified in him. And so that God's perfect plan and his will will be fulfilled in his life. I will pick up on the last part or the last sub point for number three on next week. And then we will get into, we'll get into foundational nugget number four. It is my prayer that this teaching has been a blessing to you and that this, this teaching is impacting you in a supernatural, awesome and mighty way so that God will be glorified in our lives. Father, we thank you now for another time of sharing your word, another time of coming together, Lord God, through this particular venue, Lord God, to Present your word with clarity and understanding, Father, that you will be glorified in everything that we have done, everything that we are aspiring to accomplish, Father God, for you. Father, I pray, Lord God, that your word, Lord God, has been sown in good ground on this evening, Father, that as we continue to mature and grow this topic into things of you, Lord God, from week to week, God, we're creating a greater platform, Father, for you to speak to us, Lord God, and lead us and guide us and grow us, Lord God, in the things of you. Father, we thank you for our collective efforts coming together on this evening, Lord God, for no other purpose but to hear from you, to be better positioned, to represent you, Lord God, to whoever you would send us to, Father, that you would be glorified. Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor now, for it's in the matchless, mighty, and awesome name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, family, once again, thank you 
you for being a part of our LWC3 Midweek Life in the Word Bible Study. It is my prayer that you have been blessed and God has uh, spoken to you or you heard something on tonight that's going to encourage you in your relationship and your aspirations in the discipleship process to continue to follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Until the next time we come together and share, be blessed and have a wonderful rest of your evening. Well, family, we have come to the close of another Midweek Life in the Word Bible study. And once again, thank you for sharing this time with us. Join us each week as we seek to hear from God through the effective teaching, hearing, and understanding of His Word. Until the next time, remember, Jesus is Lord, God's Word is true, and the Holy Spirit's active presence in our life is always a difference maker. Be blessed.